Hey everyone, Alex here. You remember my sister Mackenzie. She was with me in France and a couple other videos. Hello. We are here today in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we are on the pier. We got some pictures to retake. Let's go. Well, we drove to the St. Pete Pier and parked here. And you can see there's a pelican lot a little bit further down the pier as well. We were in the area for a wedding, but on our free day, I took the liberty of dragging my family around St. Petersburg to retake a few photos from my 1950s travel book. The first being this one, which reads, 2,400 foot municipal pier is trademark of the Sunshine City, St. Petersburg. The city's first pier was built in 1889 and was popular with both anglers and swimmers. It went through several iterations before becoming the pier we see in the book, called the Million Dollar Pier, built in 1926. It housed a casino, the spa beach, a solarium, bait houses, an observation deck, and a radio station. It was demolished in 1967 due to deterioration. After that, this funky inverted pyramid was built by architect William Harvard Sr. This building stood for four decades before being torn down in 2013. The restoration we see today opened in the summer of 2020 and costs $92 million. The St. Pete Pier District is 26 acres with green spaces, restaurants, and a wide range of activities. From the pier, you can spot the Vinoy Resort across the water. In the book, the caption reads, Sailboats pass Vinoy Park Hotel on way to a day of sport in sheltered Tampa Bay. The Vinoy Renaissance St. Petersburg Resort and Golf Club actually has a very long and interesting history. I'll leave a few links below, but the gist of it is, a businessman named Amer Vinoy Lawner made a bet with a famous golfer, Walter Hagen, in the 1920s. Hagen lost the bet and handed over $170,000 to Lawner, which today is over $2.5 million. Lawner used some of that money to build a spectacular holiday destination. The Vinoy was designed to resemble palaces and villas of Europe's Mediterranean coastline. There was a Pompeian-themed ballroom and every inch was covered in decadent detail. Everyone was obsessed with it. Fast forward a bunch, and by 1975, the Vinoy Hotel closed its doors for good. It was set for demolition, but in the 1980s, the local residents fought to have it placed on the National Register of Historic Places. It went through a huge renovation and opened back up in 1992. As of April 2023, it is owned by Marriott and is in the process of becoming converted into one of their new autograph collection properties. I will put a link below if you want to see what it would be like to stay here, but if you just want to visit, there are several eateries on site as well, with more planned to be opened with this new renovation soon. I've got a couple recommendations I'd like to share in this area from my people who live there. Please feel free to share your recommendations in the comments as well. First of all, we have Good Fortune St. Pete, a restaurant that was recommended to me for their Asian-inspired dishes. A little bit north, there's the Noble Crust. It is known for its Southern and Italian dishes. If you are looking for freshly caught seafood and cocktails, there is Trophy Fish. I've been told you can't go wrong on Central Avenue. It runs from coast to coast, but it looks like most of the action happens over here, east of the 19. The whole area has more of a local feel with no chains and mostly independently owned businesses. There's even an antique row, an entire block that's mostly all antique shops between 25th and 26th Street. I'll put some links below that give more recommendations for the Grand Central District and the Central Arts District. 
There are a couple fun events that happen each year at St. Petersburg as well, like the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. It's an IndyCar series race held every spring. It utilizes downtown streets and sounds like a good time. If you like racing like that, the P1 Offshore St. Pete Grand Prix happens yearly. And in 2023, it'll be over Labor Day weekend. Also each spring at Vinoy Park is the Reggae Rise Up Music Festival. It's already happened this year, but they are selling tickets for 2024. We are going to hop on over now to St. Pete Beach for a minute, which is actually where we spent most of our time on this trip. We had one photo to retake, this one, which reads, new $22 million Sunshine Skyway extends 15 miles, St. Petersburg to Palmetto. I actually wasn't expecting to see this bridge, which is why I barely have any footage from this day. We went down to Fort DeSoto Park, which is a state park with lots of beaches, campgrounds, and a historic fort. We didn't have to pay to enter the park despite there being a sign, we just had to pay for parking. As we drove to the far east corner of the park, I spotted the bridge. I was interested to learn that this is not the bridge from the book. The original Skyway Bridge was completed in 1954. At the time of its opening, it was the longest continuous bridge in the United States. Unfortunately, it was the site of two major maritime disasters over a short period of time, resulting in dozens of deaths and the bridge's partial destruction in 1980. A totally new bridge with more safety features was built and opened in 1987. We stayed at an Airbnb on Tierra Verde. It was way more quiet and residential when compared to St. Pete Beach. We were also able to avoid the exorbitant resort fees as well. If you happen to be there, we ate at this amazing little restaurant called Tony and Nello's. The pizza was really, really good and all the staff were super nice. Tierra Verde is also the meeting point for Island Ferry Eco Tours, a kayak rental company who offers tours through the mangrove systems on Shell Key. I'll leave a link to them below. St. Pete Beach is a super fun area and I can recommend the Postcard Inn Beach Bar and Snack Shack as a good time. We also went to the Frog Pond for breakfast and it was totally amazing and everything I've ever wanted. Most of my time at St. Petersburg was spent with friends and family, which is awesome, and I would love to go back someday to see everything else that's now on my list, and probably to stay at the Vinoy. <laughs> Please leave your recommendations below so I can add them to my maps, and don't forget to subscribe to follow along on our journey to recreate all 2,000 photos from our vintage travel book. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.